Learn the secrets of success. Exclusive insights and information from the experts. Tag Radio. Ready to let your mind go wherever technology leads? Then tag, you're it. Tag Radio. Here today. Imagine tomorrow. The Excalibur Awards, unique in all of Georgia's vast technology industry and beyond. Now a major annual event initiated by TAG to showcase the impact of technological innovation on traditional day-to-day business. From the micro-enterprise to the global conglomerate, the Excalibur Awards recognizes the very best in all of Georgia's tech-enabled companies, companies who demonstrate exemplary competency in utilizing the latest and most creative advancements in technology, technology to enhance their business market penetration, retention, and future growth. Greetings, everyone. It's Tuesday, September 11th, and this is Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mantella. Tino's special guest is Brian Shield, Executive Vice President and Chief Information Officer of one of the most tech-enabled companies in the world, the Weather Channel Incorporated. Brian is Chairman of the 2007 Excalibur Awards that will be held October the 17th at the Intercontinental Hotel in Buckhead. One of Georgia's and the world technology community's top CIOs, Brian Shields heads all technology infrastructure, internal systems, weather forecasting capabilities, technical and broadcast operations, and implementation of industry-leading technology products and services in support of the Weather Channel. He also sets the strategic vision, technical direction, and financial controls on behalf of the company's entire IT organization. The countdown to the 2007 Excalibur Awards has begun. Applications, nominations, event presentations, keynote speakers are all in progress, heading for what insiders are already calling the biggest and best in the award event history. Let's gain an insider's outlook on Excalibur's 2007 action plan as Tino Tech Talks with Weather Channel CIO and event chair Brian Shields. Brian, uh, thank you for joining me on Tech Talk today. Thanks, Tina, for having me. Uh, Let's start by talking a little bit about the Weather Channel. I know lots of great things are going on there, and I understand that uh, the organization just celebrated its 25th anniversary. So talk a little bit about what kind of activities you're focusing on nowadays. Certainly. Yeah, first thing, yeah, we, um, back in May of this year, we uh, celebrated our 25th anniversary, so... um, and who would have thought from 25 years ago that uh, 7 by 24 weather would be the, uh, uh, the hit that it is today. So uh, we're really excited about all that. The, um, at the Weather Channel, we've got um, a number of uh, key initiatives going on. Probably the uh, absolutely, in fact, the largest of, of all those is our efforts uh, regarding high-definition television. We've, um, for the last year or so, we've been actively pursuing a path towards um, ensuring that the Weather Channel can operate in high definition. And uh, as you can imagine, from watching uh, HD, it's about to be very right. impactful from an audience point of view. And um, for us, however, the challenge is, is it has there's really kind of four parts to it. One of them is that we're actually building a new facility. So it's a new facility adjacent to our present building. It's about a 13,000 square foot building that um, will basically house a uh, you know very modern um, contemporary studio that allows us to do shoot all of our HD programming. So we're really excited about that. And um, we've been actively working at it. And for anyone who comes by the Weather Channel these days, you'll see a uh, significant construction effort taking place. So um, that's a really key component, obviously, of our HD strategy. But it's really only one component. You know, together with that, we're, we basically have to double the size of our technical centers in our facility. Um, that means that you know, we're actually pretty far through that path. We expect that completed, frankly, in about another month or so. But um, obviously an enormous initiative uh, on part of the uh, technical organization means that we essentially have to replace all of our television or broadcast equipment. Uh, as you can imagine, when you move from traditional standard definition TV to HD, you know, there's a lot of challenges, and one of them is, is, is essentially the need to upgrade or replace the vast majority of your traditional equipment. And then third, for us, it really, in one of the areas that kind of uniquely defines the Weather Channel, it's, it's really um, coming up with a new digital video device that we basically place in thousands of locations around the, um, around the country that essentially allows uh, television viewers to continue to get a local weather experience um, from the Weather Channel. So we uniquely create um, patented technology that allows us to deliver those capabilities. And even now 
we're basically going to be doing all of that in, in high definition. Which uh, so together, those four characteristics really represent um, obviously a significant investment, uh, over fifty million dollars in total, and um, it's something that uh, we're very proud of. Yeah, I don't think most of our listeners would re realize that uh, uh, switching from uh, the, the traditional model to HD would require a, uh, a build out of a new building and. Uh, and just the, all that goes into that. So congratulations for taking that step. And I would think that that means uh, with, you know, all the advancements with digital platforms that uh, consumers are going to get their uh, weather in many different ways. So uh, what's going on from that, that end of life? Yeah, I mean, two things there. Um, the first um, version of our HD products will be shown on DirecTV uh, in just a couple weeks. Um, September 19th, to be exact, we'll... Uh, We'll be launching a new HD service on the DirecTV um, platform. For those that have DirecTV, you'll see a, a much more compelling product. What it also means, though, and you, you bring up a really good point, is that essentially all of our products will take advantage of this. So that includes not just what we do in television, but we'll continue to leverage many of these same capabilities now um, in different formats, you know, on, both on wireless and on the web and other types of areas. So you're going to see a much, much improved over the course of the next 12 to 18 months graphically rich, highly high animated environment uh, on Weather Channel, which I think is going to be it's going to be terrific in terms of telling the story about weather, um, and, and certainly during times of severe weather, I think it's going to give people a uh, a greater appreciation for you know Mother Nature and all the challenges that kind of holds. So um, I think it's going to be uh, a really great experience for consumers overall. You know, relative to uh, platforms, we've got um, a, a lot of things going on there. Obviously, we um, with all the different digital platforms coming out, it's, um, we're continuing to look at ways in terms of how consumers uh, digest weather and, and how we can make this information more available and more contextual. And so, you know, it's interesting. We launched Weather.com just over 10 years ago. And uh, today it you know, really consistently ranks as one of the top 10 websites in the world uh, in terms of total usage. But, the, um, but really, in many ways, the web is not as cutting edge or ultra cool as we used to think it is although we continue to advance it, obviously. Um, and so toward that end, you know, we spend a great deal of our time looking at ways of making weather products available on mobile platforms. That's a huge focus of ours. Cell phones, PDAs, um, in-car navigation systems, uh, you name it, where we're actively exploring ways in which we can um, bring weather uh, to consumers in a very virtual environment. We have a new product, well, a product that we've had out for a while now called Desktop Weather by the Weather Channel. And so that basically enables people to continue to get rich information on their PC platforms. Uh, we have a number of widgets, as we call them, that will be launching. Um, some of those will, be every, those will range everywhere from Google widgets to uh, Mac widgets, et cetera, where people can continue to get weather on demand in their PC platforms. Where uh, some interesting things that are coming up is, you know, we're even extending it now into areas, un you know, non-traditional areas like gaming. And so, you know, next year, 2008 NFL football product from EA Sports will start to contain some weather segments or weather information from the Weather Channel. So you'll be able to watch some of the key say, football games that occurred that had, you know, snow issues or you know, snow conditions associated right. with other yeah. types of things. So make it a little bit more realistic, I think, for. Uh, you know, for uh, consumers. Yeah, I think today, you know, all the people just see the, the same sort of uh, uh, venue and weather, so uh, it's going to be much more realistic, I would guess. Yeah, you know, and as a uh, as growing up in the Boston area, I can remember a number of games where, you know, you're, you're, you're they're playing football in, you know, six or eight or ten inches worth of snow. And right. It's fairly dramatic, and, uh, and so I think for many of us, looking forward to kind of reliving some of those old moments as well. The, um, in addition to that, we've got a couple of unusual things where we now sponsor an island on Second Life. So for those um, advocates of Second Life out there, we, uh, we have a weather island where you can kind of visit us and take a look at some of the things that we're doing here at the Weather Channel, and um, as well as new things in the areas of both podcasts and interactive TV. And so um, our goal in life is as you know, these products continue to become more personal, we want to be able to provide you with a more personal experience and uh, and really kind of make it much more tailored to the individual as, um, as technology advances and enables us to do these things. So our listeners out there, many of them are in the technology space, certainly are going to be wondering about all the support that the CIO has to give to all of these new um, operations and activities that you're 
you're instituting at the Weather Channel. So what, what's, uh, what's your day look like, and what kinds of things do, do you focus on in terms of supporting the environment uh, that you're helping to create? Well, it's a great question. We, um, we obviously don't do it alone. We've got um, an environment for the Weather Channel looks something like internally we have probably about 500 servers. Um, we have a few additional, a couple hundred more servers running um, the TVCI or what we call weather.com environment. And we probably have right today over 8,000 servers scattered around the United States. Those 8,000 servers are the servers I mentioned earlier that enable us to localize the television experience. And so, you know, managing that environment, as, as, as many other companies who have uh, similar or larger footprints know, is, is no trivial matter. Um, as pertains to our web and mobile platforms, we really rely um, very heavily on a, on a relationship that we've developed over time with uh, Verizon. Uh, we take advantage of the Verizon co-location facility here in the uh, Georgia area. And, uh, and that's really been a great experience for us. And, um, you know, we used to historically use some of the larger ISPs around the country. And, you know, moving it to Verizon locally, you know, at first we thought it was just convenient, but it really kind of turned out to be having sort of the co-location capability in your backyard really enabled us to kind of provide a higher quality of service to our customers than we feel we would have been able to do otherwise. So we're very appreciative of the work that uh, Verizon's done with us. And, um, and really the other key for us is, like a lot of companies, I think over the last five to seven years, we've really been focused on, you know, what are our core competencies in the areas of operations? And, you know, we've made a lot of decisions in terms of recognizing, you know, kind of what are we good at and, you know, what are we struggle? And, um, and so one of the things that we've done is we've outsourced some of our support um, capabilities. Um, one of the companies that comes to mind is Transparent Technologies Incorporated up in uh, Lawrenceville. And they've been a partner of ours now for eight years and continue to um, do much of the support, tier one support for our external server environment, um, working with cable partners around the country, and um, as well as basically supporting a lot of our internal systems as well from a remotely. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a complex environment. We've got some great professionals internally. We uh, rely on partnerships in many areas, and we've got some, you know, really particular strategic partners like QTI and uh, Verizon who really kind of really help make a difference in this area. Well, that's great. And, um, you know, it's, it's a privilege to be working with you in, uh, in partnership on the Excalibur Awards, and uh, uh, you're certainly representative of the community that uh, we're trying to reach in relation to uh, tech-enabled companies. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about, as a chairman, uh, what message you'd like to leave folks with that are listening and maybe the few that haven't signed up yet that we need to get to uh, attend this event? Yeah, thanks, you know. Yeah, I'm really excited about it, and I, and I think for those of your listeners who, who may not be familiar with the Excalibur event, it, it's really geared towards Georgia's you know, tech-enabled companies um, and, and how they really leverage technology and innovation to, um, to, to an optimum extent. It, it's really about sort of the, uh, the best companies that find great ways um, and, and, frankly, oftentimes disruptive technologies to basically facilitate competitive advantage. And so what, what's really exciting about it for me personally is as someone who um, works in this space uh, on a daily basis and, and really I have for most of my career, it's, um, it's, it's really an opportunity for, um, if, you're, if you're out there listening, it's really an opportunity for both, you know, tech, technical leaders as well as leaders of organizations to really recognize some of the really key and, and compelling work that your organizations are doing. Um, you know, if you think about it, you know, much of the work oftentimes that takes place within traditional companies really does, goes unnoticed outside of the four walls of the organization. And so, as you know, Tina, we're really excited about sort of being able to sort of have an award program that really recognizes this, this unique contribution that technology individuals make. And, um, and we really are excited because I think it's, it's an opportunity for the Georgia people to really understand what really, you know, exciting technology takes place um, in our communities. And, um, and I think it's going to be a terrific event. And I know that, uh, you know, in terms of both the, uh, the speakers that we have lined up and the uh, other things that we've got going on, I know it's going to, uh, I think, really, really compelling for people to uh, learn more about sort of both their other companies and their in the organization, uh, company, excuse me, in the Atlanta area, um, as well as, as, frankly, hearing a little bit more about from our keynote speaker. Yeah, and um, there's still time uh, to apply for the awards, so we, we're looking for nominations now and people that are 
in the technology companies that are supporting uh, tech-enabled companies are certainly uh, welcome to submit names of companies that I like to say that get it, that are actually using their technology and, as you've said, making a difference, differentiating their company and, uh, and creating a competitive advantage. So, and that's what it's all about. T technology companies, for the most part, are only going to be successful if these tech-enabled companies can uh, make use of their uh, goods and services and, and make a difference. So, um, and it's uh, it is uh, a special honor to have uh, your boss as our, our speaker. So, uh, why don't you tell talk a little bit about Deborah Wilson, uh, who's going to be our keynoter for the event? Sure. The, um, Deborah Wilson, who, who is my boss and, and someone who I've had the, uh, the honor of working with for the last um, nine years at the Weather Channel, is, um, is going to be the keynote for the event. And Deborah, as I think many people in the Atlanta area know, and, and those certainly in the, um, in the web community certainly aware, I mean, Deborah really, in many ways, is the pioneer and founder of weather.com and, and our business um, environment. And so, you know, it's really it's a tremendous story. And so she, what she's going to be doing is, telling everyone a bit about sort of a little bit of the history of the Weather Channel, um, the challenges that we've had, the successes, the failures that we've had, um, how we operate um, from an insider's point of view. And, uh, and Deborah really brings a really fresh perspective to, to many of the challenges that, um, that we deal with on a disruptive level. If you think of the business model of the Weather Channel, and both in terms of television as well as the web, you know, it's one of those environments where people will say, hey, you know, you can get the weather from any company, if you will. So the Weather Channel really is a foremost organization in terms of continuing to remake itself and endeavor really as sort of the leader of our company and the person who's, who helps establish that vision is, um, is really the person who, um, who can speak to it the best. And I think you know, people are going to be really, uh, really going to enjoy um, some of the aspects that she'll be talking about. We've, uh, we've sprinkled the presentation with a combination of some very interesting things that, that were going on, the challenges that we faced. Um, how we've dealt with some of the issues around disruptive technology, some lighthearted moments, and, and some more serious ones. Because at the end of the day, you know, for the Weather Channel, you know, it's all about how do we deliver timely information, you know, to consumers, you know, especially when they're facing um, adverse weather conditions and things like that. So um, we'll talk about what that all means because um, many of the challenges that we face are going to be challenges in our challenges, frankly, that the rest of the Atlanta marketplace and Georgia certainly face. And so I think anyone will come away with a probably a better understanding of what we do, but also I think, you know, hopefully some areas where they may pick up some um, ideas in terms of what they might apply to their own organizations. And, um, and I'll certainly uh, be there to kind of answer questions that people might have and be happy to follow up with them as well. Well, that's great. Uh, we're, we're very excited about having Deborah and uh, certainly your leadership. Uh, I can't think of any better representative of a tech-enabled company than the Weather Channel, and I think people will be just amazed and uh, and pleased in terms of the progress that uh, that your company is making, and it sets a great example for the rest of the community and what we're looking for in terms of driving Georgia's economy. So, uh, Brian, thanks uh, thanks for your leadership on this, and um, we look forward to the event, which is on October 17th at the Intercontinental Hotel, and there's still about 100 seats left. Uh, we're nearly sold out, but there's still time to get in. And uh, so hopefully people listening will uh, go to the TAG website and, and sign up. So, Brian, thank you for joining me on Tech Talk today. You know, let me, let me just um, give one particular last challenge, if I might, which is to all the uh, CIOs, CTOs, and IT leaders out there who might be listening, and, um, and a number that I've already contacted, Really, I really encourage you to use the Excalibur Awards as an opportunity to, to really recognize the excellence that takes place in your organization. You know, you, you, your people oftentimes don't get the credit they probably do, frequently deserve, so here's an opportunity to really kind of make a difference and uh, encourage you to really kind of take advantage of it. And uh, please go to, you know, tagonline.org and, um, and register and, and put in an application for your organization. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you at the event. That's great. So Brian laid down a challenge for all of you. Hopefully you'll uh, you'll pick up on that and uh, and participate as a nominee and also as an attendee. So thanks for joining us on Tech Talk, Brian. Thanks, Tina. Great to be with you.